Happy Sunday, everyone. Today is Sunday, February 6, 2022. This is day six. I shall be reading to y'all Gospel of Matthew, chapter six, verses one through 34, and Gospel of Mark, chapter six, verses one through 56. Make sure to check out other videos as well. I have lots of kinds of videos, mostly music, but I have other kinds as well. And let us begin. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. Teaching about almsgiving. But take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen. I say to you, they have received their they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not left. Do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. In praying, do not babble like the pagans, who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. The Lord's Prayer this is how you are to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not subject us to the final test but deliver us from the evil one. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. Pause the, the scripture. Question. Where do the Protestants get the extra part after the Our Father. I Please comment below. I really want to know. Because in the Catholic Church and in the Orthodox Church, that extra bit in the Our Father is not in it. So, just wondering. And I have family members who are both Catholic and Protestant, so I'm open to both. So, anyway. Teaching about fasting. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your father who is hidden. And your father who sees what is hidden will repay you. Treasure in heaven. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and decay destroys, and thieves break in and steal. But store up treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor decay destroy, nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. The light of the body. The lamp of the body is in the eye. 
If your eye is sound, your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be in darkness. And if the light is in you, if, and if the light in you is darkness, how great will the darkness be? God and money. No one can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot ser serve God and mammon. Dependence on God. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow nor reap. They gather nothing into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not... Are not you more important than they? Can any of you be worrying and add a single moment to your lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothes? Learn from the way the wild flowers grow. They do not work or spin. But I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was clothed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass of the field, which grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not worry and say, what are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given you besides. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. That was Matthew 6 verses 1 through 34. Back to the Catholic and Protestant versions of the Our Father. I grew up Catholic, so I know the Our Father, the Catholic, which I read. Um, but for thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power is yours. Um, that little add-on, which the Protestants added on. I'm just wondering where the Protestants found that. I'm just curious. But please comment below. I am open to either version, but I know... Um, the Catholic version way better because I was raised Catholic so okay Mark chapter 6 the rejection at Nazareth he departed from there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples when the Sabbath when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph, uh, Moses and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and among his own kin and his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Mission of the Twelve He went around to the villages in the vicinity teaching. He summoned the Twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick. No food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. 
he said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave from there. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off her feet in testimony against them. So they went off and and preached and preached repentance. Repentance. They drove out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Herod's opinion of Jesus. King Herod heard about it, for his fame had become widespread, and people were saying. John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work in him. Others were saying, he is Elijah. Still others, he is a prophet like any of the prophets. But when Herod learned of it, he said, it is John whom I beheaded. He has been raised up. The death of John the Baptist. Herod was one... Herod was the one who had John arrested and brought in prison on account of on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. She had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of uh, of Galilee. Herodias' own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, Ask of me whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to the half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? She replied, the head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her made her request. I want you to give me at once on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests he did not wish to break his word on to her. So he promptly dispatched an execute executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl in turn gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it to laid it in a tomb. Pause from the scripture. How the heck would someone be able to do that to someone? And Salome, a girl, she would be like trauma. She would be like in trauma seeing a dead man's head. But anyway, well, actually, everybody would be. But anyway, back to scripture. The return of the twelve. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in a boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. The Feeding of the Five Thousand When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. By now, it was already late, and his disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already very late. 
dismiss them so that they can go to the surrounding farms and villages and buy them themselves something to eat. He said to them in he said to them in reply, Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Are we to buy two hundred days wages of worth of food and give it to them to eat? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five loaves and two fish. So he gave orders to have them sit down in groups on the green grass. The people took their places in rows by hundreds and by fifties. Then, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up into heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and, and were satisfied, and they picked up twelve wicker baskets full of fragments and what was left of the fish. Those who ate of the loaves were five thousand men. The walking on the water. Actually, pause. We're going to do a little story after this little segment. Return to scripture. The walking on the water. Then he made his disciples get into the boat and proceed him to the other side toward Poseidon, while he dismissed the crowd. And when he had taken leave of them, he went off to the mountain to pray. When it was evening, the boat was far out on the sea, and he was alone on shore. Then he saw that they were tossed about while rowing, for the wind was against them. After the fourth watch of the night, he came towards them, walking on the sea. He meant, to, he meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. They had all seen him and were terrified. But at once he spoke with them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. He got into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely astounded. They had not understood the incident of the loaves. On the contrary, their hearts were hardened. Pause. <laughs> so I remember, um, mm, this is February. So back in January, um, mid-January, maybe even December, I was at my parents' place. Um, I wasn't working that day. But I was at my parents' place, and I was going to watch um, the movie Remember the Titans. And I flip on the TV. I was expecting it to be on the DVD or VHS channel. But anyway, it was on the TV stations. I live in Canada. The TV channel was from Nigeria. There is a Nigerian pastor preaching about... This little segment here, well, the walking on the water. What I find funny is that I got a TV station not from Canada and not from the U.S. I just wanted to share that. I watched a little bit of the homily sermon, but it was good. But anyway, back to scripture. The healings at Gennesaret. After making the crossing, they came at land at, at Gennesaret and tied up there. As they were leaving the boat, people immediately recognized him. They scurried about the surrounding country and began to bring in the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. Whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch only the tassel on his cloak. As many and as and as many as touched it were healed. And that was Gospel of Mark, chapter six, verses one through fifty-six. And actually, back to the Nigerian on TV channel. <laughs> I still don't know how that happened, but anyway. Um, Yes, he was actually um, preaching about this passage 
that happened in the Gospel of Matthew. So, yeah. It was the um, feeding of the 5,000. Then the walking on the water, I guess it was. But it was a while back. But anyway, I just want to share that little tidbit for y'all. And thank you for watching and joining in. And please make sure to check out my channel. God love you and happy Sunday.